Hey kids, it's Mr Fly here, hope you're well and uh, welcome to the posh bit of Great Missenden on a very uh, chilly day, it's a beautiful day it's a little bit icy under tyre so I'm going to be taking it very easy on today's ride anyway, the bike I'm on today is something a bit special it's uh, an electric bike and it's the latest bike from Zero now about uh, five years ago I rode the Zero DSR and that bike absolutely blew me away in more ways than one it was the first proper electric bike I'd ever ridden and the acceleration and the silence of it was just something else well that was some time ago and we've seen lots of electric bikes since then so let's see if this one the Zero DSR X has the same effect on me this is the world's first purpose-built electric adventure bike stick around and stay tuned let's see if it makes any sense Okay, so welcome back to the channel. I'm uh, a little being very careful today because as I mentioned, although I've been riding this bike for a few days and this, in fact, this video has got bits from over various days, as you'll notice as the weather might change a bit and stuff as the video goes on. When I'm filming this bit, there's a lot of ice and frost on the deck. It's, uh, although it says the ambient temperature is six degrees, it's actually been hovering around freezing all day. I just got back from a walk through the woods and it was freezing there. So on a big, heavy, expensive bike, I've got to be very careful. Particularly as the last time I rode the Zero DSR, I fell off. The torque got the better of me on that. I went round a corner that I'd ridden round a thousand times before. I put the accelerator on and uh, the back end slid away from me. Well, I'm glad to say since then, as I say, I think it was about five years ago, since then these bikes have got a lot more clever. This one now has a six axis IMU, lean angle sensitive ABS and traction control. So hopefully, not wishing to talk anything up, that certainly isn't going to happen to me today. Anyway, I'm going to be riding very carefully on this review, as I say, because these things have an incredible amount of torque. So before we get into the review proper, let me show you around the bike. All right, well, the jury is out for me on the looks of this bike. I'll be very interested to see in the comments below what you think of this, whether you think this is a good looking bike or not. Let's have a little look rounder. So the front end, as I say, I can't quite decide whether I like this or not. I think I do, it's not ugly, it's got, uh, I don't know what it reminds me of, it's, um, I don't know, a vacuum cleaner, something like that, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh, um, it's certainly different and it certainly looks adventure bikey, there's a few features I like about it, first off uh, in the front here, if I just do this, you've got this storage compartment and this is where you keep the charging leads and things, I've got my vloggery stuff in there at the moment, but there's loads of room in there to keep stuff, so practically that's quite handy. Uh, it reminds me a bit of the Honda NC750 in that respect. I love that sort of thing, a bit of storage. It's also got additional storage behind these pads here. Unfortunately, these aren't lock and open. You have to use a little uh, Torx screwdriver thingy to open those up. So, uh, so that's a bit of a nuisance, but you have got some storage there as well if you want to really pack her out. There's the adjustable screen, which you use these knurled knobs for. You can adjust it on the fly but they are quite stiff. I have managed to do it on the fly, but uh, moving up and down doesn't make that much difference. And more of that later. We've got the big old uh, battery and motor. We'll talk about that later. Uh, there, massive uh, rear tail piece. Bit of a tail tidy required there. That's not unusual, is it, on bikes? Uh, there you can see it's got belt drive, so no maintenance uh, as far as a chain's concerned, so that's a good thing. I don't think I've come across an electric bike yet that isn't belt driven, mind you. Complicated looking rear wheel, the way that's attached. Just noticed that for the first time. Uh, what else? Uh, well, that's about it. There's not, there's not Nothing really particularly unusual about the bike's design, I don't think. I mean, it looks conventional adventure bikey, doesn't it? And it's a matter of sort of personal taste, whether you think it's a good looker or not. I think on balance, looking at it from the side there, I do like the looks of it. What do you make of it? All right, welcome back aboard. So that's what she looks like. How does she ride? Well, I have to say, lovely. It rides exactly as you'd expect an adventure bike to ride. The seating position is really, really comfy. Nice wide arms. My legs, you may be able to see on the 360 camera, are at a sort of a slightly acute angle, but it does feel this sort of rider triangle seat where the arms are and where your feet are and your legs feels very much like a GS to me. I wonder if they've taken the dimensions of that and copied it, I don't know, but anyway, whatever, it feels adventure bikey, uh, so that's great. The seat itself is, uh, it's alright, it's a little bit hard, but it's quite sculpted. Let me show you it. So here it is then, it's a one piece unit as you can see, uh, quite a big old, a big old seat on here, um, it's uh, 
Now it's not it's not hugely padded, so it is a little bit hard, um, but it's uh, it's nicely made thing, and uh, it's quite easy to remove as well with the little uh, locking thing there. So you just lift her off from the back. Uh, in terms of seat height, this one is standard, comes in at 825 millimeters, uh, but you can get uh, you can get one at 805. I guess it's a low seat, or you can get one for tall people, which I think is uh, 865 millimeters, something like that. So there should be one of these to suit absolutely everybody. Height wise I can actually get my feet pretty much flat on the deck on this. The suspension is nice and soft when you come to a stop. Sinks down quite nicely and my, my feet look I'm only short at 5 foot 8 flat on the deck on both sides so that's a plus point. Okay what about the stuff you're looking at when you're riding the bike then? Let me just wait here. Is this a three way signal? Possibly. There's temporary traffic lights everywhere at the moment. It drives me nuts. Anyway stuff I'm looking at here look very simple handlebars. We've got the mode switch here which uh, also does the heated grips. Uh, basically you hold it to the left and it turns heated grips on. You uh, hold it to the right and press it to go through the various riding modes. More about those later. Uh, indicators horn. Uh, lights at the front. Uh, on this side you've basically got on and off switch is what the red button is. Uh, and then you've also got cruise control on there. And then you've got this big TFT which is nice and clear. It's not different to what you're used to on internal combustion engine bikes of course. Because it's all about um, charge and range. Now I put this on charge uh, before I went for a ride a couple of days ago. And the maximum I can get it to was 95%. Oh hello, lights have gone green. Look and the truck's coming down. Uh, and that gave me a range, I think, I'll put a picture on the screen, but I think it said the range was about uh, 80, 85 miles, something like that. At the moment I'm riding it, it's on 61%, it says I've got a range of 59 miles. I've been, as I say, riding it the last few days, and I've found in real world riding, the range is about 80 miles on this. And that, uh, and that is a problem with an adventure bike, isn't it? So we'll come back to that a little bit later. There's a few elephants in the room when it comes to adventure bikes. But anyway, uh, electric adventure bikes. But anyway, we'll part that for now. We'll come back to that. But yeah, what you're looking at is all very nice. Nice and clear. Um, one of the better TFTs I've seen. It's got this little dinky screen on here that is adjustable by these big knurled knobs that you can actually, you know, wind while you're on the move. I've got that on the top setting at the moment, but even though I'm a relatively short here at 5 foot 8, I'm still getting quite a lot of wind on the top of my helmet here. So that screen isn't very good and that's not its highest position. Okay, it's all very well riding the Zero in the countryside, the sorts of rides that I like to do. But what about if you're riding the bike in town? Well, electric bikes like this do come into their own somewhat when you're in the urban environment. Because uh, with the regenerative braking on them, they do do better from a fuel economy point of view. So I came out, this is a different day when I'm recording this section of the review. I came out having charged the bike fully up. I could only get it to 98% charged. It said it had a range at that point of 74 miles with a full charge. Well, I've come out and just ridden it amongst traffic. And since then, the range has gone up to 80 miles. Can you see that? <laughs> so obviously, riding in traffic suits it. You seem to get a magic boost of range, which is rather nice. So from an economy point of view and range point of view, riding in town actually helps the uh, the bike, but of course you're not necessarily going to be riding in town all the time on a big old adventure style bike like this. But while we're in town, the other advantages of course of it being a big old adventure style bike is that it is big and it does have great road presence. So hopefully people can see you coming, particularly on this white version of the bike. I can see over the traffic and up to the lights easily because I'm nice and high on the machine. And actually, because the weight on this particular Zero is nice and low, it's all right for nipping through traffic as well. And thanks to its rather brisk acceleration, he's going to come round here, nice bit of uh, <laughs> indication by the van. I was going to say thanks to its brisk acceleration you can nip past traffic easily but uh, then he turned off anyway. But there's plenty of power there to nip in and out of traffic. Good road presence, easy to ride in traffic of course with no gear changing or anything like that. So actually if you bought one as a commuter, number one you'd probably save on fuel because look the range has gone up again it's saying 82 miles now. If you rode it in eco mode with the maximum battery regen then it'd be even better. I suppose the only thing that might be a downside riding it in town is your lack of conspicuity from a noise perspective. People often say that don't they with electric bikes you can't hear them coming and of course in town if you've got a loud pipe people can definitely hear you coming with the noise bouncing off the, ra off the uh, buildings and stuff. Not the case of course with this so that's an interesting one. But yeah riding around in town Absolute dream on the Zero. 
taking it easy on the corners and yeah the front end on here is the acceleration is amazing let me just here we go look at that nuts I'm just in standard riding mode and it feels like you're being fired out of a catapult the acceleration on these electric bikes is like nothing else if you've never ridden one before you've got to give one a go just to experience that because it really is something else I love that about the uh, DSR road and I love that about this it's got a top speed of something like 127 miles an hour I think but boy does it get there quickly there's not a lot on the road that will keep up with this and this is just in standard riding mode as I say let me uh, let me show you the motor on this so here it is, tucked behind there. I hope you can see the motor. You can just see the uh, the cooling fins in there. It's a brand new motor. It's called a Z4 750 10X, which uh, zero say has a peak power of about 100 horsepower ish. But don't let that fool you because it uh, it feels an awful lot more than 100 horsepower because it's got that whopping 225 newton meters of torque. Now just to put that into context, the GS 1250 has 143 newton meters, and that's a torquey bike. My six cylinder 1800cc Honda Goldwing has 170 newton meters. This thing has 225 that is a lot of talk while we're down here let's talk batteries as well now I don't claim to know much about these but the battery is clearly the biggest part of the in quotes engine compartment this one says ZF 17.3 on it it actually has a it, that means it's a 17.3 kilowatt hour battery which is pretty large it is upgradable to 21 kilowatt hours uh, with the optional 3k power tank upgrade uh, but as I say another three grand for that it has a charge time if you plug it in at home of around about 10 hours. I found it a little bit quicker than that actually at my house. Um, the Zero guys quote 107 miles of range uh, is mixed riding, but in reality I found it to do somewhat less than that. It's one of those weird things where if you ride it in town you'll get better mileage than if you ride it on the motorway, but more about that later. Okay, welcome back aboard. Just come up to a roundabout here. There's a car behind me, it was a little way behind. Just going to try the brakes out on here. See what they're like. Let's give the fronts a dab little bit of fork dive but the brakes themselves feels nice and pro progressive there's no big initial grab it's just the more you pull it on the harder it gets of course nice and controllable let's uh, come round here where's that car gone right he's gone from behind me let's try the rear brake actually rear brakes very good on here much better than many that uh, I've used before let's take a look at those brakes and they are at the front uh, Huahuan four pot calipers uh, grabbing onto a 325 mil disc and at the rear we've got a two pot caliper grabbing onto a 265 mil disc and as I say it's got lean angle ABS as well associated with them so the brakes on here pretty darn good okay so I'm going to head up to my normal test route having just uh, gone out the way there a little bit just to see what the situation is on the roads with regards to ice on these main roads they seem like they've all thawed out all right but I'll go down my normal test route where it's a bit more twisty and we can try the uh, we can try the suspension out a little bit more see what that's like so just while we're uh, heading up to my normal test route to see how the bike handles it's worth just mentioning on this review I'm not going to go through all that stuff that everybody does on electric bike reviews there are plenty out there to go and have a look at if you want to talk about how you charge the things you know the apps that you use to charge it what you plug into where and all that game I do recommend uh, my mate Bruce Teapot One's video when he went up to uh, John O'Groats from Land's End on an electric bike it wasn't one of these it was another one but he did it to test the practicality of the bike out so go and check that video out if you haven't seen it and you'll get to know all you need to know <laughs> about what it's like fueling these things up and living with one for a few days on a long journey well of course it wouldn't be right to do any sort of review of a uh, motorcycle that's badged as a touring motorbike without doing a bit of motorway on it to see how she fares well it goes without saying the DSRX has got bags of torque and bags of power for keeping up at motorway speed so here I am look, cruising along doing 70 miles an hour ish and uh, yeah there's absolutely loads more to give so no problem overtaking anything on this road if I want to but uh, really I want to see what it's like from a wind protection point of view it's got this massive frontal area on here which is great as far as keeping the wind off my legs is concerned but I have to say this little screen isn't so good keeping the wind off my top half it is adjustable by these big knolled knobs here which you can do on the fly I've adjusted it to its highest position but I am getting a face full of wind and uh, I'm not the tallest person in the world at 5 foot 8 if you were really tall you would be up really in some turbulent air unfortunately the air also is coming around the sides of this little screen and hitting my shoulders and it's not smooth air even with the screen down as well it's quite turbulent what comes off that so if you've got to do a stretch on a motorway it's comfortable enough but you are going to be buffeted by the wind 
and of course that's where the range starts to take a hammering as well because you're not getting the benefits of the regenerative braking and so on. So one of the use cases with an electric bike that doesn't really stack up long journeys on a motorway, not really great for the DSRX. Something I really like about this bike, which I've not noticed on other electric bikes so much as a complaint I've had on others actually, is that this is, of course it's nice and quiet in that there's no engine noise and it's beautifully smooth. I mean, obviously no gear changes and no vibrations because of it, it's electric. But I also, I can't hear other things going on either. Now I've got earplugs in to stop the wind noise, but uh, on the DSR that I rode all that time back, one of the things that used to annoy me about that bike when I rode it was when I was riding around town or whatever, or applied the brakes or whatever, I could hear the brakes and the suspension doing their work, making rubbing noises or clonking or whatever. Whereas on this bike, that's not the case. Everything is nice and silent on this. I don't hear the brakes doing their work, even though they're very good. I don't hear the suspension doing its thing. It just feels nice and solid, nicely, nicely made this machine. It feels a quality machine and it should do because it comes in at something like 24 grand in its standard form. You could buy a bit extra, I think another three grand if you want a, a faster charging, higher capacity battery version. And then you're into sort of silly money, aren't you? 27 grand for an adventure bike. Okay, so this bike was very much marketed as a touring motorcycle, a sort of a do it all, an adventure bike if you like, the sort of bike that you would go off for a week or two and do your motorcycling holidays on. How does it fare in that department? Well, let's just park and ignore the range issue, the elephant in the room, shall we, for now, and just think about it as a pure touring bike. Well, number one, on the website, I have seen pictures of this bike with panniers on and a top box, and it comes with various, there's various options, third party options, I think, looking at them, but you can get side cases, and top box for the box. You can carry your kit, that's no problem. There's something that would be great about it is the fact that it is a very comfortable bike. The riding position is beautifully neutral. I'm sat upright. It's a nice and comfortable place to be. I could sit on here all day long. Even though the seat initially felt a little bit hard to me, it is actually comfortable having ridden this now for over an hour. It's uh it's feeling pretty good, so no problem with the comfort. And then added to the to that on the comfort stakes is of course because it's electric it's a very very smooth ride absolutely no vibrations of course so it's as smooth as riding a six cylinder motorcycle well smoother in fact so that's lovely and of course it's lazy if you're doing big miles then you ain't got to change gear or if you're stuck in traffic you haven't got to keep going in and out with a clutch it's just a very relaxing ride indeed so for the purposes for which it was designed adventure bike riding you know when you're going to be on the bike for a long time it's a very comfy place to be just that range issue that lets it down of course this is the road i was worried might be a bit icy but it's a, a good test road because it's very bumpy around here as you can see the tarmac's in a right old state but i have to say the suspension on here feels lovely it's uh, i'm going to use my favorite phrase it's in the goldilocks zone it's not too hard it's not too soft the suspension on here is adjustable it's not electronic or anything like that but uh out of the factory as i assume this one is set it feels nice let me show you that now here it is at the front uh shower 47 mil separate function forks and as i say is adjustable uh, adjusters in the usual spot there and then on the rear we've got this uh, little remote adjuster here as well for preload and uh, you can see the shock there with the with the reservoir there that's a shower shock as well and yeah the handling on here is nice the uh, the weight on here i'm glad to say is held nice and low because of that battery being low down, that's where most of the weight is on electric bikes, of course. And that's a big difference between this and that DSR I rode before, which felt top heavy and ponderous when I came to a stop. This doesn't, this reminds me very much of the standard GS in terms of weight. Weight wise, it's very similar to the GS. A fully fueled GS will weigh 247 kilograms thereabout. This one, uh, 249 kilograms, so very similar. And because the weight and the riding position is very similar to the GS, it just feels a bit like that when you're riding it. It's handling wise, it's uh, you know surprisingly agile. It changes direction quickly. It doesn't feel like you're riding a heavy bike, even though it is. Dynamically, they've done a nice job on this. Yeah, absolutely no complaints about the handling on here. It feels very familiar. And other than being let down by that screen that I talked about earlier, that isn't very good. You might even be able to hear the wind noise buffeting me away more than I'd normally want. But other than that, it's a great place to be. It's comfortable, it rides nice. Around these lanes, it's, uh, it's a nice motorbike to ride. Absolutely no complaints. He says, still being a little bit careful about the ice on this road. 
because it would really be a bad show if I fell off two zeros, wouldn't it? So the bike is laden with plenty of electronics if you like that sort of thing. I already mentioned the six axis IMU, so you get your lean angle sensitive uh, ABS and uh, traction control. My God, this thing just flies when you want it to. You've got to resist that urge to keep winding her up on the straights, especially in weather like this. So yeah, so you've got uh, the fancy new IMU, which is a, a welcome addition. It's got heated grips, as I mentioned. I don't think it's got a heated seat. I haven't found that. Six riding modes, going all the way from an eco mode all the way up to something called Canyon and all points in between. It's got connectivity for your phone via an app if you want to do that game. It's got turn-by-turn -turn navigation that you can have on the TFT. It's not a full uh, mapping job, but there is some navigation there. I have to say I'm not a fan of those sorts of uh, systems that you have to have a phone connected to. So it's got all the electronics you could possibly want and more besides. But for me, for an adventure bike, some of the most important things are things like range. And that's where uh, this bike goes a little bit awry, a little bit off piece. So should we, uh, you know, let's take this opportunity to address the issues with this bike. So shall we just address the elephants in the room when it comes to electric motorcycles like this? And that for me, are cost of the motorcycles themselves currently and range and the whole infrastructure thing that goes with electric bikes charging all that kind of caper so starting off with cost this bike something like twenty-four thousand pounds and all proper in quotes electric bikes seem to come in way more expensive than their equivalent internal combustion engine bikes don't they you know for 24 grand you can get a fully kitted out bmw gs which is kind of let's face it the leader the market leader as far as adventure bikes are concerned so the bike that this is competing with you can get a uh, a very basic gs if you believe the website <laughs> for something like 14 and a half grand time you spec it out in te form you're looking at 18 19 grand for all the things that you want but this is still five grand more than that just with the standard battery on it so you're paying way more and you're not getting any more really as far as I'm concerned although there are some nice things about this bike as we've covered but uh, given the straight choice between this and the GS I'd take the GS and I'd save the money you could do some nice tours couldn't you for that uh, five plus grand that you saved so that's the first uh, elephant in the room I guess over time as these become more mass produced that uh, cost differential will change or certainly let's hope so then the other elephant in the room is range and the whole living with electric thing the whole infrastructure thing well range wise this bike based on the sort of mixed riding I've been doing okay I haven't been doing a long tour on it I've been doing mixed riding as I've been re reviewing it over the last few days so actually mixed riding is where these actually do quite well where you're stopping and starting the regen kicks in that sort of thing but looking at the numbers at the moment I reckon I would get about 80 miles to a full charge and of course you wouldn't run it till you completely depleted, depleted the battery would you you'd be looking for somewhere to charge it probably well in my case if I think I've got 80 miles of range I would probably start looking around about 65 miles so in real terms let's say 70 miles between charges and if you're on a touring holiday 70 miles isn't that far is it I suppose you could argue 70 miles is going to take you over an hour and you'd probably want to rest after an hour anyway so that's fair enough but that's assuming of course the infrastructure is playing ball and there's a charger exactly where you want it after 70 miles and we know that's not the case now I've only charged this at home frankly I just CBA to go hunting for electric chargers around the country to give it a try I'll leave that sort of proper test to Bruce <laughs> go watch Teapot One's review of electric bikes he rode an electric bike from Land's End to John O'Groats and he didn't have a great time as far as the charging and the charging infrastructure was concerned the sorts of things he found were you get to a charger there'd already be a vehicle on it so you had to wait uh, for that vehicle to charge so there might be a queue when you get there or the charger itself wouldn't be working or it was the wrong type of charger or you didn't have the right app for that particular charger so in other in other words it was a right old bag of hassle living with the thing on a long tour and that was kind of the conclusion that Bruce drew and I completely get that there's lots to love about this particular bike but that whole electric hassle factor 
just puts me right off at the moment. We don't have the infrastructure in this country quite yet. The time it takes to charge the bike, the range on the bike, and then the reliability of the infrastructure when you find it. It's all got a way to go yet, hasn't it? So those elephants in the room, still very much in the room, I'm sad to say. So yeah, so what's my overall summary then of the Zero DSR? I've had it, as I say, for a couple of weeks. I've not, uh, I've not been bothered to do all that thing of doing a long journey and trying out chargers at uh, charging centres and all that. As I say, go and watch Bruce's video for that. I've just charged it at home. Uh, the blurb says it takes 10 hours to charge up. I found it a little bit quicker than that. I've got absolutely no complaints with the bike dynamically. The only thing I don't like about the bike riding it is the lack of wind protection. Maybe there's an aftermarket screen. I'm not so keen on the mirrors either, but that's a small point. But everything else about the bike is lovely. It makes for a proper adventure bike, but those elephants in the room I talked about, of uh, particularly range, but also cost as well when you compare it against other bikes you could currently buy for similar prices. That's what makes the bike not making a lot of sense. When we opened the video, I said, does this bike make sense as an adventure bike well my blunt answer has to be no it doesn't not to me anyway for me adventure bikes are for riding all day long taking the bike up to scotland or across europe and on this it would just be too much of a pain to keep stopping and recharging so i'm sorry zero it's a great bike to ride but for me it's still a miss in terms of the purpose for which it's designed It'd be great as a commuter bike great as a daily rider, great as something that you took out on a Sunday if you're doing sub 70 mile rides and you just charged up at home but anything other than that for me it just doesn't work so uh, there we go I might be being a bit harsh on it there I'll be very interested to hear your views on the bike do stick your comments below as usual always interesting reading those I just don't think electric bikes are quite there yet cost has definitely got to come down and they've got to be at least as good as or possibly better haven't they than internal combustion engine bikes this is why Triumph stopped on the electric bike thing. Do you remember they had that um, that prototype electric bike that they were developing that looked like a speed triple and everybody was thinking, oh, that looks like an excellent bike. But uh, they made the prototype and then said, actually, we're not going to make it because we can't make it at a price that works and with a range that works. And they used all the latest brains on that one. So they gave up. I'm not saying electric bikes will never get there. I'm sure they'll get there one day but for me they're just not there yet. There are certain use cases where this makes sense. It's quite a practical bike and it's cheap to run of course, but uh, it's not for me a replacement for my GS yet, so so there we go. Anyway, I think we've whittled on a lot. I think you get, I get, the, I think you get the point, but it'd be interesting to hear what you think in the comments below as I say. Anyway, if it's the first time you've been to my channel, it'd be fantastic to have you subscribe. Uh, if you've already subscribed, then thank you for watching once again. Do hit the like button, that all helps apparently. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again on another bike review or tour or whatever I do next. So I'm down to, uh, just in the time I've been riding this now, what? 47 miles range and 51% charge. So I'm going to start heading back home pretty soon and send the bike back from whence it came. Anyway, thanks for watching. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.